How's it going YouTube? Tuner Rita here. Welcome back to another video. Been a little bit since I recorded one of these updates on the manga and Dragon Ball news in general. But we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So normally when I post these chapter recap updates, I have the summary from DBS Hype and Chronicles and all them on Twitter. Uh, I'll just read it off and pretty much update you on the chapter. Well, this chapter this month is exactly what you would expect an adaptation of the superhero movie so if you want to know what's going on on the screen right now you can go ahead and just watch the movie all the dialogue is there we all know what happens so that's a little bit of a bummer that the um chapter won't like the chapter drafts didn't have anything new in them uh but it is what it is uh that's what an adaptation is all about i guess uh nothing too hype for me personally and it goes along with that issue I have with the manga itself, adapting all this, but oh well, what can you do? That's uh, what an adaptation is going to do, I guess. You guys wanted to hurry up and get past the Goten and Trunks stuff. Well, not all of you guys, but some people did. I liked it, and we're in the adaptation. Let's hope it doesn't last too much longer. Moving on, this happened in Super Dragon Ball Heroes. And sorry if you can hear all this rain outside. It's storming right whenever I started recording a video. Anyway, that's right, Trunks, specifically Zeno Trunks, teaming up with Future Gohan. Now, this isn't the canonical main continuity Future Gohan, it's just an alternate reality Future Gohan, from what I understand, where he survived and Trunks died. But, you know, it's cool for Dragon Ball heroes to give us some more fanfiction, what-if stuff. I really like it. And, I mean, I don't really like Super Dragon Ball Heroes. I, I just really like that the, they gave us a little bit of fan fiction here. Uh, if you know me, Trunks is my favorite character, Future Trunks specifically. And I really liked uh, what they did here specifically. Now, I, will I watch Super Dragon Ball Heroes? I don't know. I'm a couple episodes behind. Again, it's not really serious Dragon Ball stuff. It's just fan fiction uh, schlock, as some would say. And I would agree with that. Uh, I do want to get into the manga, though, and maybe make some videos talking about the manga, my thoughts on the Super Dragon Ball Heroes manga. That could be fun. Let me know if you'd like to see that, because I haven't read the manga, and from what I understand, the manga is supposed to be where the real story is at. And the anime is just to get people to read the manga and play the game, so that's what I think about that. And next up on the docket, we have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot new DLC screenshots being revealed. I made a short about this on the channel uh, because it's really not a whole lot to sink your teeth into. It's just new screenshots. They look pretty cool. I'm excited. I already bought the DLC, so I'm, of course, going to be playing it. I still have to upload the gameplay of the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Bardock DLC to my channel. That can be done, but it will be a challenge to get it done because I'll have to transfer it from my PS4 to my PC and then upload it from there. But I'll get around to it. Anyways, new screenshots. They look good. The flying Kamehameha kick from Goku there on the ground to Piccolo looks awesome. Well, that's all the news. If you've watched to this point, you can click off now. But if you want to hang out and listen to a little bit of rambling about the state of Dragon Ball, you can go ahead and keep listening. This is just off the cuff. First thing pops into my mind. If I speak any misinformation, please forgive me, but I just got to say this. Dragon Ball, and I hate to say this, I, I, I think Dragon Ball will always be relevant. I think it's always going to... I think it's always going to be in people's minds. I've seen people wearing Dragon Ball shirts before in public. There are still fans of Dragon Ball. If you ask somebody, "Are you, do you like Dragon Ball? They'll say yeah, they used to watch it or they still watch it. I don't think Dragon Ball is ever going to fall off, necessarily. But I do think the Dragon Ball Super manga is the only thing carrying cultural relevance for Dragon Ball. There is the superhero movie that came out earlier. I don't even think it was this year. I think it was last year, right? And that kind of done a decent job of putting it back into the minds of people again. But when you're not talking about Dragon Ball... Okay, here's how it works. You release new content. People talk about the new content. People get excited for newer content. They go out and buy merchandise. 
That merchandise also funds the newer content or shows people that they're interested in the newer content. The newer content gets produced. It's a self-sustaining machine, pretty much. And there's a few franchises that are like that. I mean, look at Star Wars, for example. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I collect Star Wars action figures out the wazoo. Okay, and when it comes to my Dragon Ball collection, I'm mainly just collecting Dragon Ball manga, DVD, Blu-ray, stuff like that. But with Star Wars, I'm collecting all the action figures because there's new content coming out where there's, you know, new characters popping up in a show. I get that, things like that. But with Dragon Ball, there's new content coming out, but it's only in the manga. So for some reason, Toei isn't letting uh, the companies produce merchandise for the manga so there's no granola statue there's no moro statue there's no uh, ultra ego vegeta there's no whatever goku got there's none of the heathers you know there's none of the other various prisoners from the galactic pr prisoner saga or anything like that and so it creates this problem for dragon ball for toei for toriyama whoever that they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot because they're like, okay, here is the manga. If you want the anime, there's no way we're doing the anime. It feels, and again, it, I mean, I've said this before. People say, be patient, be patient, buddy. Dragon Ball went off the air in 2018. People have been patient long enough. It's it's getting to the point to where it's unbearable. It's, 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 it's kind of, I don't understand. There's the argument that they want them to let the manga get ahead and then the anime will catch up. And I used to believe the same thing. I used to think, yeah, that makes sense. That's a really cool idea. But buddy, there's enough content out to where the anime can go on for like a year and things will be good. Now, the problem is, is that the anime will eventually outpace the manga. But at that point, just take the anime off the air for a year or two. Just like what's happening with Boruto. From what I understand, Boruto went off the air for a year or two or however long. And the manga's still going. And I'm not actively watching Boruto. So sorry if that's not exactly the right details. But that's from what I understand. That's what they did. They're like, okay, we can't sustain this. We make too much filler. We're just going to take it off the air for a while and let the anime catch up. I mean, the manga go ahead, and then the anime will continue. That's all they have to do with Dragon Ball. I mean, clearly they have no issue with taking it off the air for a year or two. They've done it for many years now. So literally, just adapt the Moro arc, adapt the Granola arc, take it off the air, and then go back, come back whenever you're ready to adapt the next thing. Or, heck, just adapt the Moro arc, go off the air for a year or two, and then adapt the next arc, and then go off the air for a year or two. I mean, it's Dragon Ball. The filler's fun, so you could also make some filler and pad some of that out, you know? I don't know. It just seems like the solution is there, and Toei just doesn't want to adapt. They don't want to get with the program. It's not exactly a challenging thing to make an anime that people are going to watch. It's it's simple. It's straightforward. And sorry if I'm getting a little bit ranty, but seriously, it's been long enough. Do you agree with me that it's been long enough? I mean, it's been since 2018. I mean, come on. I like the new movie, but I don't want to just get one new movie every three years or however long it's been. I want to get a new show. Heck, I would take a new show, 24 episodes season, 12, I don't know, just give me a new show. Give me a, give me Dragon Ball Super. Don't call it Super 2, just continue from the episode we left off, which I think was 131, but I, I'm probably misremembering. Just give me episode 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, keep going and keep going, and then go off the air, let the manga go ahead, and then bring the anime back, and that's all you gotta do, guys. That's all you gotta do, because the manga is adapting the movie now, and it's taking its time, it looks like. It's taking its time. I don't want to be, uh, what's the word, toxic or anything like that and just spread negativity and hate, but, I mean, I'm a Dragon Ball fanboy. I've loved Dragon Ball since I was a kid. It is hard for me to criticize Dragon Ball because I love it so much. I like Super. People hate Super, but I like it. And I'm still like, let's just get the road on the, let's just get it on the road. 
let's get, let's get the show on the road. Let's let's get this done. Let's go and move on. I'm fine with adapting the superhero movie if they're going to add stuff. I'll still be reading it. But for general audiences, that's not going to be that's not they're not going to be excited to go out and pick this stuff up. And they're gonna they'll be they'll be more excited to pick up the new stuff after this adaptation arc. So I hope it doesn't take too long. But the bigger debate is, okay, now what are they gonna do whenever the show comes back? Are they gonna whenever Super comes back, are they gonna adapt Super Broly and then Moro? Who knows? You know, this is they're certainly not above that. They've done that before with Beerus and Frieza. So it's 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 a it's a unique situation that we as Dragon Ball fans find ourselves in because they could literally print money with this thing. And they're taking their sweet time with it. They are taking their sweet time with it and we are here to suffer. But, you know, I think this channel and all the other new Dragon Ball stuff coming out kind of helps me as a Dragon Ball fan to uh, bear it, bear through it, to just kind of be like, because I could, whenever the anime comes back, I could be releasing weekly episodes reacting to the anime, or just talking about the anime episode with somebody that hasn't wa read the manga, that could be fun, and, you know, I want to do stuff like that with this channel whenever the anime comes back, but they are taking their sweet time. And it's getting a little unbearable. But I'm still going to continue to try to be patient. I've been patient long enough, but we're going to try to be patient. Maybe another year or two. I don't know. But whenever that anime comes back, it will be a huge sigh of relief. Anyways, if you like this rant, guys, let me know if you want me to do more rants in these update videos. That could be kind of, kind of fun. And I will see you in the next one. Peace off.